after Thanksgiving. Are you still feeling full from your Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday? No, that's, that's just me. Oh, as full as I feel, I just can't stop myself from eating pie and ice cream. I love it. Well, I'm glad you're here today because we're wrapping up our series called Shout Out. We've been talking all month long about gratitude. And I'm sure by now you can say this just as easily as I can. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. Now before we jump into worship and our lesson taught by Orange Kids, let's play a game. This one has absolutely nothing to do with a holiday or gratitude. It's just meant to get you on your feet. It's called Panda Workout. Yeah, you heard me right. Panda Workout. And it's just one minute of Panda Workout. So stand on up and follow along. try that extreme hand sand. But if you did, we totally need a picture of it and you can share it at CCV Valley Kids on Instagram. Well, permission to settle back down because we're about to jump into our story. In fact, in today's story, we're going to learn how we can make a habit of remembering what God has done for us. Let's check it out together. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, Chapter 11. The night before Jesus gave up his life, he had a special dinner with his closest friends, the Passover meal. Take this and eat it. The Israelites had been celebrating Passover for a long, long time. It all began in Egypt when God's people were forced into slavery. At last, God sent Moses to face down Pharaoh and demand freedom for the Israelites. Let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to let the Israelites go, but then changed his mind. And each time, God sent a plague, a terrible warning, so Pharaoh would let the Israelites go. There were frogs, flies, hail, darkness, and more. And finally, God sent the 10th and most terrible plague of all. The Lord says, every oldest son in Egypt will die. It was a terrible day, but God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Go at once. Each family must kill a Passover lamb. Put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. The Lord won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God had told them. That night, Pharaoh finally ordered the Israelites to leave. Get out of here. Go! The Israelites packed so quickly that they didn't even have time for their bread to rise, so they baked flatbread without yeast. Mmm, crunchy. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. Always remember this day. You and your children after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. 
As God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal of lamb and flatbread with no yeast, just like the bread they had taken with them out of Egypt. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Jesus grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. But when he shared the meal with his friends the night before he died, Jesus did something different. He changed the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about it years later in his letter to the Corinthians. On the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It is given for you every time you eat it. Do it in memory of me. The bread was a reminder of how the very next day, Jesus would give himself up and allow himself to be killed for us. Paul continues. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled out so that we can live. Because of Jesus, we don't have to try to prove to God that we're good enough. All we have to do is believe that Jesus came to rescue us and choose to follow him. Jesus took an old habit of gratitude, the Passover, and made a brand new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or Communion. The Passover meal was a celebration of how God had rescued his people from slavery. Now, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And for the last 2,000 years, people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others might do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread or wafers or wine or juice. But in every case, the habit is the same. It's a beautiful chance for us to remember together the amazing way that God has rescued us and to thank Him for all He's given us. For thousands of years, people have been finding different ways, habits, or traditions to help them remember what God has done. We remember that God sent Jesus to earth by celebrating Christmas. We remember that Jesus came back from the dead every Easter. And another thing that people do to remember that Jesus died on the cross for our sins is to celebrate the Lord's Supper or communion. Some people remember the last supper Jesus had with his disciples by eating bread or wine. Some people eat crackers and juice. But however you celebrate, it's important to remember that Jesus died for you because he loves you and he made a way for you to have a relationship with God. So here's the one thing to remember today. Get in the habit of being grateful. Let me say that again. Get in the habit of being grateful. You can find a way to thank God for everything he's done. Thank him for the smell of rain or the sweetness of ice cream you're eating or the music that makes you want to dance. If you have a moment to really remember what he's doing for you through the Lord's Supper or communion or a special holiday, don't let that moment pass you by. Really, think about how God loves you so much. I think that'll be a good habit for all of us. Actually, that reminds me of our memory verse for this month. It's from Psalm 136.1 and says this, Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. You know, I actually had some help this month reviewing this month's memory verse from some of our K3 friends, Will and Ryan. Take it away, guys. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalm 136.1. Great job, guys! Hey, if you want to be featured doing a memory verse in a YouTube video, let us know! We'd love to feature you! Oh, and speaking of featuring, we've got something very special coming in December. I'll give you a clue. It involves you and rhymes with shorship. Did you get that? 
S'moreship? Worship? Well, let's wrap up today with our two worship songs from November as a way to show our gratitude for God. Have a great week, friends.
oceans bow and mountains shake. And the sound of just one name over all Jesus reigns. I know. Wherever you're at today, I encourage you and remind you that we serve a God who is mighty and he's strong in battle and he's working on our behalf. And that's something we're celebrating today and every day. So wherever you're at, just lift him up, lift him up. Oh, there is the King of glory. 